Let's take today's class for a very interesting principle found within Aikido like Jutsu. It's called Sujo. Su comes from line and Jo comes from pure. So we'll take Sujo as pure line. It's a rather um, uh, interesting principle because it is not you know, a concrete idea. It's based on the, uh, the straight line of your harai, of your ki. So, starting from this point of view, we already see that we cannot uh, try to understand sujo, you know, look into its, its movements or to the techniques which, uh, you know, which are applied using sujo, because we would find no true meaning for that. So, in this sujo, we have to look to the, the whole movement and um, what, what binds, what, what joins tori and buke. Um, for us to find sujo in these, uh, in these techniques, uh, we have to understand that tori, um, since the very beginning, has um, two points, his hara and the hara of the uke, and he will find a very straight line, and uh, most importantly, uh, one, just one action without any kind of uh, interruption. So, let's see for example. Uh, if he enters you know, this side, uh, if, I, if I take this time and enter just as in Aichi, like this, what you're doing here is, I am I'm getting over his attack and his energy you know, by you know, imposing my own harai, and we have this diagonal line and akuzushi. This is just as Kihon, Kihon asks us to do. That is, finding a, a, a sukima in the structure of his attack. However, this is not sujo. For us to have in this very moment sujo, what you would have to do is have this very straight line. And this very straight line creates this disturbance in his uh, main, in his central line. So, for example, oh, you have just one line, this same line. One more time. If we imagine this imaginary uh, straight line and Hara enters and yet under this line. Now, in this line we'll see two poles, this hand downward and this hand upward and this, uh, this will polarize the central line of Uki. Instead of doing this, we'll have this. It's very important to state and to understand that uh, we are not talking about just the movement itself, we're talking about how Uke and Tori, how they interact. So, say for example, in Ushiro uh, Tori, if I just enter and have him here, we know by now that uh, historically it means that someone else would try to cut me and that this would be part of a strategy of the enemy. Uh, so, other enemies could use, uh, for example, a sodegarami, that weapon in which you know, they would tear a kimono and flesh and even bones bringing the person down to the floor, to the ground, or someone else, other kenshi would then draw and, and cut, but uh, the most important thing here in this attack historically is that he would try to, uh, to lock both my hands so I wouldn't be able to draw. Now, that was just Kihon. If I just if I just put a Kitomeru here and get him straight forward like this, one could say I have found Sujo because he has walked over a straight line. However, this is not correct. And the reason for that is that this line happens between both of us. This line happens ever since he touches us. So this line, and now when I enter, I must I must put my hara and my form in such a geometry which makes him shaped to my movement. For example, as if he 
feels he is all of a sudden uh, he joins with us. So one more time. Instead of doing this only, and here this line cannot stop. Sojo also means we can never stop. This line must uh, not interrupt. So one more time. And if he comes to cut, see this tension. If someone else tries to cut from this direction. Okay. Now, same thing happens if he, if he comes one more time from uh, Yoko Miyuchi. So, first downward, then open. Yeah, in just one straight line. It's quite different than allowing the energy, allowing uh, Oke's key to, uh, to spin and to move, to, to put him in a position we would like. For example, in the same technique, Yokome Yuji. Quite interesting from an Akirutsu point of view, since he has his hara you know, uh, aiming uh, off aiming off, not aiming toward ourselves, and his hand is quite um, far from us, and I could perfectly keep the technique in Kihon, but in Sojo, you have this quite differently. And uh, now, let's understand this point of view when we need to have a different kind of kuzushi, or when you have to allow his ki to uh, be directed first. So, if I have a ten chinagi, for example. So in kihon, what we would do? He would hold very, very firmly. Yes. Yeah, so I would have to set a kitomeru first, and then enter. I would have to set aside to put my hara aligned with his kuzushi or the kuzuderu itself breaking down his posture now uh, when we speak about sujo things come a bit differently if he comes to, to hold very very firm very strong One time. very strong so if we take this just this, this movement, this scene, and we fragment it, what will happen is he holds very strongly. So I won't be able to keep against him. And I also, if I am in a studio principle, I cannot just step aside. So what I must do, I must relieve his key and then direct. However, uh, yet here, I just can't step aside. So I must follow this same line, but in this case, energy will have uh, a, uh, a circular motion. So. In Harage, one can find, now differently, one can find this. It holds very, very strongly. Yes, and now I have my, I have both my feet here, and I, in this Harage technique, in this Harage study, I wouldn't be able to use my legs. What I would have to do? He holds the most strongly he, he can and he bases up, is lowered. So I just cannot just try to find an ankle, find in Kuzushi or in Kuzuderu. Uh, under this perspective, he holds strong and I would have to But here, what we can see is Inhaling, bringing my key to the center, bringing my um, my mental focus to the center, then joining his key together, and creating this kind of um, this kind of musubi between my hara and his own hara. Yet from here, this 
tension, this power here has to expand all of a sudden and spinning. So this would be which is very different from allowing his key to circle in the same in the same floor, in the same stage. So one more time. And then in a straight line. So we see, although we have a although we have a straight line and although it this, this principles this principle of Sujo implies how uh, he would he would shape to my movement, it's my obligation under this principle uh, to make him shape to what I intend to do. For instance, to have a jaw. The use of jaw in Aikido Jutsu. So, uh, we have seen, for example, if he holds strongly <coughs> both hands, we have seen techniques in which he tries to take my jaw away, and I uh, have to use leverage uh, under the, the, the guidance of Aikido Jutsu to have him, uh, to throw him or to have him restricted. So, for example, this is Kiho. But all these techniques come from Sujo because what happens? He's holding with both his hands and we have one fixed point. We have one, uh, one ending of the jaw taken already. And uh, we can find Sujo here when we understand that because it is taken already, it is also already under control. So if I move even in uh, over a circle here or here, if it is a pure circle, it would also mean that my hara is affecting his grip and then by consequence his own hara. And if I can find um, uh, the influence of it over a straight line, I would have sujo as well. So say, when I have this, or in a, in a technique, when I have, actually, I'm so when I have this, and then to the floor, We can find that in nearly all, all the basic techniques you know, in which we have Jo in Aikido Jutsu, we'll see it as an expression of Sujo. Now, say, back to Aikido Jutsu. Ude Osai in the Kihon technique is found entering like this. So we have weight over his back and his kara is locked and his shoulder is also locked. So we have a kitomiru here. So when I enter from here, I will rotate, I will spin my hara and have him here. Now, this is kihon, which means the origin from kenjutsu, that is he will cut and I will cut with the same feeling of his own. So in sujo we have a different uh, meaning for this. In Sujo, we have him here first, so we have established already one point um, of communication, and from here we are just allowed to have one straight line, which is this. So when we see sometimes some uh, older masters, some older teachers, instead of doing like this, or instead of doing like this and entering and cutting, and you see them putting some kind of emphasis on getting here first and all of a sudden cutting, cutting very strongly, then entering. What we can see is that he is showing the same technique uh, under a different perspective, under the principle of Sujo. Uh, it's also interesting to say that 
this principle, just as some other principles found in Aikido Jiu Jitsu, which I studied later on in our school, are something like a, a division, something like something which shows uh, more or less until where someone uh, had, had studied or until someone or until the degree of study someone had because one could have powerful and strong techniques which could be perfectly correct under Akirjutsu but yet not to be aware of the uh, of some of the very interesting and subtle yet quite powerful principles that shape a more advanced Akirjutsu.